Just back at Wrigley Field, they were going to go up. And then World War II began, and he donated the steel to the war effort, and lights were pushed aside until tonight. Right. Mark Grace, single to center in the first inning, so the young first baseman is hit in 10 straight. They've also done some research on the Cubs, how accurate or how true, I don't know, but they published it here that from 1969 through 1984, they figured out that the Cubs lost three or four games at the end of the year that they might not have lost had they played some more night games. The percentage after the All-Star game and after September 1st, they worked the pattern all the way back to 1946. One of the things the Cub players say that will help them is if they come off a road trip where they have played a night game and then they travel home, normally they would then have to play a day game the next day. But they now will have a chance to rest before taking the field, and that could be a factor. It is. Uh, having played here, the first two games, at least, when you come off a road trip playing day games, it's a little tough because it's a whole different uh, routine that you have. And then you get into heat. You get into heat, and then when you're used to day games, you go on the road again. 0 oh and 2 to Mark Grace, and that's to the screen. Ball one, one and two. Grace will be followed by Andre Dawson. No score, bottom of the fourth inning. Not only no score, no Cub has been to second base, and no one for either side has been to third. You know, another thing I was interested in that I read in the paper they start the games a couple of minutes after 7 o'clock, and there is no curfew on the game. However, the organist, as I read it anyway, the organist may not play after 10 o'clock. Because of noise? Yep. That was the note that was in one of the papers. <laughs> two balls and two strikes the count to Mark Grace. Got him, and he knew it. Good, sneaky fastball on the outside corner, although Fernandez has only struck out two. It's a good fastball on the outside corner, and Grace is just caught looking. I mean, he hits it. This is a perfect pitch right there. You can see him. He made him give ground, and it's an easy strikeout. Lamar well, Grace, head-shaking time in the Cub dugout. Once again, we remind our viewers, we'll be selecting Chicago and Mark Grace, a big rip and a foul on one. Terry Leach is down in the Mets bullpen. There's Terry heating up. When the Mets come up in the eighth inning, they have Howard Johnson, Keith Hernandez, and Darryl Strawberry. Meanwhile, Montreal has come back into that game with Pittsburgh. It is 7-5 in favor of Pittsburgh at the end of seven innings. 0-1 to Grace. One ball, one strike. Hey, you can't take anything for granted with these Cubs. The one big change in the, in the whole Cup thinking is they've added speed. It used to be they used to have those big home run hitters. And Zimmer will run them at any time for no other reason than to break up the infield. Anytime you got movement in the infield, you have a better chance for the base hit. And Sandberg has stolen 16 out of 21. There's a ground ball up the middle. Backman can't get it. The run is over. Sandberg goes to third. 5-2 Chicago. You're going to hear things like I didn't pick up the ball in time, or it was just a CNI ball just out of my reach, and that's exactly what's happening here. They just can't get to it. Five hits in the inning for Chicago. It started, Webster struck out, Palmiro single to right, Barry Hill flied to right, then there was Jody Davis double off the glove of Dykstra, the infield single by just back at Wrigley Field. They were going to go up, and then World War II began. And he donated the steel to the war effort, and lights were pushed aside until tonight. Right. Mark Grace, single to center in the first inning, so the young first baseman is hit in 10 straight. They've also done some research on the Cubs, how accurate or how true, I don't know, but they published it here that from 1969 through 1984 they figured out that the Cubs lost three or four games at the end of the year that they might not have lost had they played some more night games. The percentage after the All-Star game and after September 1st they worked the pattern all the way back to 1946. 
one of the things the Cub players say that will help them is if they come off a road trip where they have played a night game and then they travel home normally they would then have to play a day game the next day but they now will have a chance to rest before taking the field and that could be a factor it is uh, having played here the first two games at least when you come off a road trip playing day games it's a little tough because it's a whole different uh, routine that you have and then you get into heat you get into heat and then when you're used to day games you go on the road again oh and two to mark grace and that's to the screen ball one one and two Grace will be followed by Andre Dawson. No score. Bottom of the fourth inning. Not only no score, no Cub has been to second base, and no one for either side has been to third. You know, another thing I was interested in that I read in the paper, they start the games a couple of minutes after 7 o'clock, and there is no curfew on the game. However, the organist, as I read it anyway, the organist may not play after 10 o'clock. Because of noise? Yep. The note that was in one of the papers. <laughs> two balls and two strikes the count to Mark Grace. Got him, and he knew it. Good sneaky fastball on the outside corner. Although Fernandez has only struck out two. It's a good fastball on the outside corner, and Grace is just caught looking. I mean, he hits it. This is a perfect pitch right there. You can see him. He made him give ground, and it's an easy strikeout. Lamar well, Grace head shaking time in the Cub dugout. Once again, we remind our viewers we'll be selecting. Ground ball to the right side. Sandberg to Dunstan to Grace. However, the Mets get two runs, three hits, and at the end of four and a half, two nothing New York. These are the had the steal for the Towers and they were on flat cars as we understand the story just back at Wrigley Field they were going to go up and then World War II began and he donated the steel to the war effort and lights were pushed aside until tonight. Right. Mark Grace single to center in the first inning so the young first baseman is hit in 10 straight. They've also done some research on the Cubs how accurate or how true I don't know but they published it here that from 1969 through 1984 they figured out that the Cubs lost three or four games at the end of the year that they might not have lost had they played some more night games. The percentage after the All Star game and after September 1st they worked the pattern all the way back to 1946. One of the things the Cub players say that will help them is if they come off a road trip where they have played a night game and then they travel home normally they would then have to play a day game the next day but they now will have a chance to rest before taking the field and that could be a factor it is uh, having played here the first two games at least when you come off a road trip playing day games it's a little tough because it's a whole different uh, routine that you have and then you get into heat you get into heat and then when you're used to day games you go on the road again oh and two to mark grace and that's to the screen ball one one and two Grace will be followed by Andre Dawson. No score. Bottom of the fourth inning. Not only no score, no Cub has been to second base, and no one for either side has been to third. You know, another thing I was interested in that I read in the paper, they start the games a couple of minutes after 7 o'clock, and there is no curfew on the game. However, the organist, as I read it anyway, the organist may not play after 10 o'clock. Because of noise? Yep. The note that was in one of the papers. <laughs> two balls and two strikes the count to Mark Grace. Got him, and he knew it. Good sneaky fastball on the outside corner. Although Fernandez has only struck out two. It's a good fastball on the outside corner, and Grace is just caught looking. I mean, he hits it. This is a perfect pitch right there. You can see him. He made him give ground, and it's an easy strikeout. Lamar well, Grace head shaking time in the Cub dugout. Once again, we remind our viewers we'll be selecting two time. Chopper to the hole, Dunstan backhands, ties to set, throws, high throw. Oh, what a play he made. And he seemed point the finger at Mark Grace, who had enough confidence in.
position himself to go up off the bag and find that bag coming down. I tell you, you watch this throw, it's deep in the hole, and he gets a lot on it. In fact, in a poll, Baseball America calls him the strongest infielder as far as throwing, and he really guns it. Man. His back foot isn't even really solid for him. See how he had to throw completely overhand, and what a throw. It's all arm, but look at Grace looking for that bag as he comes down. Out. The infield is up, and Mark Grace at the plate. Same situation as in the fifth inning with Barry Hill at the plate. Ball one. And of course, after Grace, you have Andre Dawson. Hey, here's where he's got to get that strike out as we look at Dawson. Mets leading two to one, bottom of the sixth inning. One ball, no strike have gone after a bad ball but there's so much movement on Fernandez fastball anyway I think it was out the strike zone but all he wants to do is make contact put the ball in play he just wants to keep him striking out because that infield is in put it in play and you got a chance to sneak the one through one and one to count I slicing fly ball down in the corner foul and back into the stand one and two Well, here's where you've got a chance as a battery, and Hernandez just said something to Fernandez. Uh, I'm sure go out and get him right here. I wouldn't try to set him up for a 2-2. This will be an interesting confrontation. You have a pitcher who strikes out hitters, and you have a hitter who strikes out less than 10% of the time. And with that going on, the tying run at third. Got to go with what Carter thinks is Fernandez's best pitch right here. One ball, two strikes. Sweeper down and away, two and two to Mark Grace. Still got an edge right here. He can't go to three and two. Zimmer frustrated in the fifth inning when they left Palmero at third. Now he has Dunstan at third with one out. Two balls, two strikes. Exactly where I was. One and one. Ground ball, but Grace is there. And that will be that. No runs, two hits, and two left. And at the end of two and a half innings, the Mets nothing and the Cubs nothing. The first night game in history of Wrigley Field, Chicago. And what a festival. And the fastball is grounded to Mark Grace. And by lucky is out of the inning. No runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of an inning, there's in 66 chances. Magan in 21 games at third, one error in 55. So that's not too bad. Not bad at all. And an indication of the type of game Sid Fernandez pitches. The first two outs are fly ball. Mark Grace, the youngster just up from the minor leagues, and maybe that's one reason why he has been hitting so well at night. He's hitting 365 at night games and in the 270s in the daylight. And when he talks about seeing the ball better, it could be because he's so accustomed to playing night ball in the minor league. Definitely. The minor league player, when he comes to the major leagues, has to really learn how to use sunglasses. He very rarely plays a day game. 0 and 1. Breaking ball ran away. Of course, the first night game in professional ball, May 2nd, 1930, that was Des Moines against Wichita in Des Moines. One ball and one strike to count. To the left of short and through base hit. So Mark Grace, who hits left hand, is very, very well as a two out single to center. And Andre Dawson coming up. He just tried to stroke that ball right back up the middle. He doesn't take a very hard swing. There it is. 
Fernandez can't get it. It's by Howard Johnson and base hit for Young Grace. He has hit in 10 straight now. He's hitting over 290 against left hand. So he hangs in there very, very well. And now Andre to deserve the spot. Ground ball to Grace. And Mark waves Perry away. One down. Time for another update. Let's go. Tonight's NBC Miller Lite player of the game is first baseman Mark Grace. Miller Lite happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Mark Grace to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society.